back button. Focus. No, these aren't three entirely random words just thrown together to get your attention. I wouldn't do that to you guys. If I wanted to get your attention, I'd just show like, what, a cute picture of a dog or what's that video of a cat playing the keyboard? Meow. But I'm not that kind of desperate YouTuber yet. You know, I don't think I am. I'd also pick three better words. Back button. Focus. Isn't that sexy, is it? Or is it? I don't know. Some people love feet. But if you're a photographer and you've heard rumblings of this sexy little phrase, back button, focus, then you're in the right place. Because today I'm going to talk about something that might just change your life as a photographer. Yep, back button, focus. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Sam, a wedding photographer in the UK. I've been shooting weddings all over Europe for 10 years now and also have the pleasure of educating other industry professionals, which you can see in the description below. So what exactly is back button focus? Simply put, it's just a method of focusing your camera that separates the focusing function from the shutter button. In most cameras, certainly when it's straight out of the box, the shutter button, which is the big one on the front of the camera, is responsible for both focusing and capturing the image. So when you half press the shutter button, that focuses the shot, then a full press fires the shutter. But with back button focus, you can assign the focusing function to a button on the back of your camera. Incredible. Now, why on God's given earth would you do that? Really, it allows you to focus on your subject and then recompose your shot without worrying about the camera refocusing when you press the shutter button. It's especially useful for situations where your subject might be moving or you wanna recompose the shot. I can still remember the day I got told about back button focus. I mean, that makes me sound a little bit sad, but it's not, I don't literally remember the exact day. It's not like having kids or getting married, but I do remember clearly thinking, whoa, you can do, you can do what? And as a wedding photographer, this was huge because it had two major advantages for me. One, it gave me more control over how I could frame the shot by just allowing me to focus and recompose. And two, it was far quicker than changing the focus point. For example, if I wanted to frame someone to the side of the shot, I'd lock focus by pressing the back button, get a safe shot in the center like this one, then simply adjust the angle of the camera so my subject was on the desired side, like this shot, and fire the frame. The only other way to achieve this before mirrorless bodies and eye tracking was to manually adjust the focus point, then focus, then shoot. But it would be super slow as you'd spend half the day moving a focus point around the back of the screen. Kids these days, they'll just, they'll never know the real struggle, will they? Also with back button focus, you don't have to wait for the camera to focus every time you press the shutter button, which given the fast pace of weddings, you're ultimately there to capture fleeting moments, right? So. When you fire the shutter, you want the shutter to fire, not for it to start hunting for focus. So before we showcase how I have mine set up, and if you haven't seen it previously, I have a video on my top three hacks for the Canon R6 that I'll link to right up here. It's only right to address the slight differences we now have with mirrorless bodies. Prior to the new systems, DSLRs generally were quite limiting in how you could set them up. But in principle, you tell the camera to only fire the shutter on the shutter button. And you then tell it to start the focus operation when you press the back button. If you have a DSLR and you wanna know how to do this for your system, there are endless videos out there. There's this place called YouTube. You can just like search for stuff. It's amazing. For the new mirrorless cameras now on the market, which resemble supercomputers as much as they do actual cameras, most of them feature eye tracking and allow much more advanced and detailed custom mapping to the buttons and dials on the cameras. Again, if you're not using the Canon R5 or R6, you'll have to go and do some research, but for me, I have two configurations. I'll show you how to map these shortly, but the star button is mapped to eye tracking and the AF on button is standard back button focus as it used to be on the DSLRs. And for 90% of a wedding, I'm using eye tracking. So I'm holding the star button down to focus, press the shutter to take the shot, 
And if eye tracking isn't playing ball, I can touch the screen on where I want the focus to be, hold down AF on to focus on that chosen point and then fire the shutter. Okay, so don't worry if the last few minutes of me rambling on just went over your head. There's quite a bit to take on board there. And if, if you're new to back button focus and this is the first time you're stumbling across this term and you're still relatively new to using a camera, then you are allowed to feel a little bit overwhelmed and confused by it, it's totally fine. We're gonna try and break it down and just make it a little bit more easier to process for you guys. I, if only, just, if only I had some way of just demonstrating this process to you so that you could easily understand just how quick and effective this way of shooting can be. Whoa, magic! We're still really new to this video game, so please don't judge us for our video editing skills. Hopefully I'm a better photographer than I am a video editor. Um, this here is Courtney, here under her own free will. Aren't you, Courtney? Not, not Courtney, thank you. Excellent, right, we've got somebody and I can show you how we work through this process on a wedding day. Let's go. Okay, so here you can see we have Courtney, our amazing apprentice, who has absolutely not been coerced into participating in this YouTube video at all today. Have you, Courtney? Here, willing and participating, thank you very much. So, as I've already mentioned, 90% of weddings, I will shoot with eye tracking. So this star button in the top right hand corner, as you see now, as I press it, you can see it locks onto Courtney's eyes and I will hold that down throughout the shoot and then we'll burst. And you'll see that as I hold it, I, I keep my thumb on that star button. And as I move the camera, it tracks with Courtney's eye. So I can just reframe and shoot all the way through the scene. If Courtney takes a step to me, because we're in servo mode and because I'm holding down the star button, it tracks. And if she takes a step back, you can see that all the way through that shot, Servo was tracking Courtney's eye. Now, let's say, for example, we've got multiple people in the scene and I want to control the focus point a bit more than just letting the camera make that decision. What we can do is we can touch a corner of the screen, recompose the shot and then press the AF on button and it will lock focus on that grid that I'm using on the screen. So again, if we want it on this side, we can tap the screen, recompose, press AF on, and then shoot. And again, because I'm shooting in servo mode and I'm holding down the back button, it's always gonna track that focus point. So star button is eye tracking, AF on is back button focus, depending on where my focus point is on the screen. Absolute magic. Thank you, Courtney. Look at that, right. So that's it, the power of back button focus. And on the Canon R5 and R6, it is super quick to change. Let's walk through that very quickly. Okay, so to set this up, we're gonna go press the menu button and we're after the orange menu number three. I'm gonna go into customize buttons. Now the first thing we're gonna do here is take away the focusing part of the shutter. So we move over to metering start that now means that the shutter button is only going to fire the shutter. It's not gonna focus. Then we go down to AF on, and we're gonna assign metering and AF start. And then the final one is the star button. I'm gonna move across to eye detection AF. I told you it was quick and easy. Literally three steps to change, and that's it. You're all set up. I would also advise that you don't change that before you go and shoot a wedding. I would change it, go and have a little play around, go and shoot some friends and family, take some photos, just experiment, see how you get on, and then you take it to a wedding. Don't, don't, don't just change it and then go and shoot a wedding. That's, that's a bad idea. Right, thank you very much for watching and tuning in. If you've got this far and you've taken some ideas or value from this video, please give us a little thumbs up, or even better, subscribe. It only helps us grow and bring more content your way, and hopefully, we'll also get better at video transitions. I think, I mean, I don't know. We, we might not, we might not get better, but we're gonna try and everyone loves a trier, right? Okay, see ya. <laughs> we'll do it, should we just like jump out of that or shall I walk out? Or we could just do like a really long, slow fade, protracted fade out and I just disappear off into the distance. Like um, maybe like the sun sets in the background and I just, I just go off.